Oh boy. Roman is the biggest bad guy character in professional wrestling. Rev, when's the last time you got laid? Uh, French toast is the exchange student that you have like a three week affair with. Hey, we can see that you don't have pants on. Can we tell the truth about Dusty sooner or later? Uh, Bro, like, less less we, people wanted that than are currently watching our show. <laughs> <laughs> and you know Vince, and you still think, hmm, are these true? It's like. Welcome to the Mark It Down podcast. <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is the Mark It Down podcast. I'm James Giassanti, joined by Matt Cascone, where we have a very special guest today. Somebody I am very excited to speak with. I know Matt is as well. And with little more to say, let's introduce the Axe Man himself, Axel Titcher. Hey, guys. What's going on? How are you, Axel? Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you very much for your invitation. I'm doing great. Uh, it's almost 11 in Germany, so, oh. you know, but hey, it's it's resting. We all stay up for resting. <laughs> We're all alive for resting. So again, happy to be on your podcast and I'm pretty much excited about all your questions and I hope I can answer them. Well, thank you, sir. Um, so first and foremost, I we got to speak briefly before uh, we started the episode. And in the very small amount of conversation we had, it's already apparent to me that you have a genuine love for professional wrestling. Oh, yeah, uh, of course. I, I, I'm sorry if this is, you know, a basic question, but where did that love start? How did it grow? So it's uh, it's it's not just a basic question. It's a very important question because I think every story has a start and especially every wrestling fan has this one moment where he came across professional wrestling and fell in love with it. Probably like somewhere from watching it the first time and if it hasn't clicked there somewhere later maybe. But for me it was kind of like I fell in love with wrestling uh, as soon as I discovered it. And the story behind that is I live in East Germany, so I'm born in East Germany, raised in East Germany, but I was born before even Germany was united, so there was still the Iron Curtain. And in that time, we did not have cable television because it was kind of like Russian-based, Russian influence, so communism. And um, you didn't have that much, especially not American TV. But then when the war came down and Germany united or reunited, then uh, in the early 90s, my parents, they had cable television. And I remember at that time, cable television was huge. And you could see all like the animes, and for example, He-Man or Turtles. And that was my thing, like comics and everything. As a child, I never played with cars. always like the largest the life superstar, so to speak. So the Turtles, right, just like buffed up and jacked up like... Ninja Turtles beating up bad guys and same with He-Man and stuff like that. And then I remember I was around six years, five years or six years old. And I should have been in bed, but I sneaked out. And then I watched my parents watching WWF at that time. And I think it was something like Ultimate Warrior-ish because that's the first thing I remember. And I was kind of like hiding in the corner just watching secretly. And then I saw that, like, who's that guy? Like, the muscles and everything, and they're fighting. So I was right into it. And then what I remember, my first pay-per-view was WrestleMania 9, Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas. And I remember my parents had, like, a video recorder. And again, it was post-reuniting Germany. So the eastern part of Germany had access to actually more advanced electronics, for example, also cable television so they recorded WrestleMania 9 and I watched it like a madman and also like the WWF Superstar stuff I remember the Ico Pro banner like Monday Night Raw and Madison's now not Madison Garden but in New York mm-hmm. like all that stuff so it sticked with me and I was a huge wrestling fan and there was a big boom here in Germany as well so still to this day when I speak with people about wrestling like especially the older folks they always talk about early 90s wrestling, Bret Hart, Undertaker, Hulk Hogan, stuff like that. 
And yeah, so I became a wrestling fan. It lasted about a couple of years, I think end of 94. Um, and then I kind of stopped watching it because I had to go to school. And because uh, WWF at that time got broadcasted in Germany, but very late, midnight-ish, sometimes like 10 p.m. midnight, uh, I couldn't watch it really. So I lost track of it. But then 99, especially beginning of 2000, Rumble 2000, Madison Square Garden, like the Attitude Era, then I saw it again and I fell in love again. Uh, like, That's a good time to come but, back. You took that break around 94 where things, a lot of people tend to complain about that time. Period. Yeah, like I remember uh, researching back like 95 was horrible. Like the, the over-the-top gimmicks and whatever. Yeah. And then 96 pick up with like Austin came in and started a little bit like the like uh, the Attitude Era, like with this King of the Ring victory and yeah. everything. So uh, then I it got like more like a little bit edgy. But like I remember when I uh, watched WWF at that time, uh, the Rumble it was such a new kind of like gritty way of professional wrestling, especially WWF, because I knew it from um, the era again, WrestleMania Nine, right? So yeah, that era. So but then I, it it reignited this fire for wrestling, but this time I was. Let's say not old enough, but I was like older to understand it a little bit better. Yeah. And also, I was kind of like trying it out in a way of like first a little bit backyard, but not too much of it. But then I find with a, uh, one of my best uh, uh, school friends that time, like a club where they taught professional wrestling, not in a professional way, but more in the way like one guy went to seminars. And he brought the knowledge back to the group. So he passed it on and like this kind of stick. But yeah, so kind of like felt in love with it twice. <laughs> well, that's, I, I think that's more powerful because that could have, anybody can enjoy something in the beginning, but yeah. you were able to reignite that love and turn it into a career. So I find that to be yeah. really inspiring. And yeah. to, in between, there was some serious stuff happening. Batman, Spider-Man, you know, but they yeah. couldn't. Uh, also, like very big in Germany, soccer, as you, you Americans would say, it's like yeah. football here. But um, it's like the thing I, I I love to play soccer in the, that area, like in uh, in that time, two thousands. But then I discovered like wrestling, and then I dropped like there you go. soccer like a hot potato. So you know. <laughs> who knows? I mean, in an alternate reality, somewhere in the multiverse, you are as just as successful a football player as you um, are a wrestler. No, you don't think so? Probably not. No. no. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I could do like some tricks, but I sucked in playing in, in, in like bigger plays, bigger games. Yeah. So I don't think so. I'm Fair a better enough. team player with wrestling. Well, that's actually leads me to uh, a question I was really eager to ask you. You're obviously known for being a seasoned stablemate. You know, in on the Indies initially, it was uh, Ring Conf, and then that turned into Imperium and the WWE, and then of course your time with Sanity. Uh, how did it feel to be, in my opinion, relied on to be an integral part of both teams? I think both of those teams were very uh, dependent on, especially in the early days, the unity that mm -hmm. you guys showed, and uh, each of you playing a part. Yeah. Um... So with Ring Kampf was more the real thing because I remember when we formed Ring Kampf, I was already on the WWE contract and I kind of like paved my way through the NXT development part, mm -hmm. paved my way through all the eggshells. So, um, and in that uh, time, like nowadays known as Gunther and Ludwig Kaiser, they started Ring Kampf in WXW in Germany. Um, and they kind of like, so, so the idea was to create a brand, like a, like a fashion brand in the wrestling bubble in Germany or in Europe or world. Uh, and then later on, um, the decision was made that let's bring it into a storyline, which was good. Uh, and then in the end, um, it kind of like turned out to this whole stick where they put Timothy, uh, Timothy Thatcher in that as well. And then they created this kind of like this gimmick, this character which was real. Like it was kind of like 
like every good character or every good gimmick is like it's real but turned up to 11 right mm-hmm. so it was kind of like that because i remember uh, we always said like it's like this old saying from ludwig kaiser's dad axel dieter he was very famous very successful in germany i think the first ever german wrestler after world war ii who really went into it it was very successful but he always had the saying like there's like three categories on on co-workers in the locker room there's number one it's like your friends you greet them with love and respect and you hug them then number two it's like the co-workers you really like so you, you like to be around them and you say hello and you be friendly and then it's number one you know, or, or category number three is you say hello, goodbye, and that's it. So, and we kind of like made like the statement about like, yeah, that's true. Like, like in life, like you would go to a normal working place and you would find these three categories probably. So they turned it into this character, but then in the end, it was just them without me because I was uh, associated with WWE. So I think when they peaked, I was already insanity um and then with imperium it was for me kind of like finally have the chance to perform in that act different name but same act same music as well and just have my kind of like now i could can be a part of that group right and just represent um the stuff what we really felt you know and that is the matter sacred because uh Traditional here in Germany is it's not about the entertainment. It's about the sport. It's about uh, how much you put in, uh, like, the effort of training and do you respect it, right? It's kind of like a codex, like in the martial arts uh, business as well. So we treat it as such, as a real sport. And, um, yeah, but with Sanity was right right the opposite because Sanity was character. It was more... Uh, Triple H had an idea and wanted to have a group and he was looking for potential guys who could fulfill his wish. So, and they put us four together uh, in, a, in a kind of like a chaotic way, it fits the group. So first it was just meant to be three guys because the idea was uh, the Trungle Brothers from Smoking Aces. I don't know if you know the movie. Yeah, I, I love Aces. that movie. Yeah, I love that awesome movie. Awesome movie. So he had the idea, I want to have a, a group, a stable, like the Charmer Brothers, those crazy uh, hitmen, so yeah. ass- assassins. I, I never made that connection, but now I, I'm I'm seeing it, like the third eye opened yeah. on that one. Yeah. So, and uh, I knew the movie and I knew exactly what he wants, so I was very excited. And then also I was even more excited when they told me and sorry, Fulton, hey, we put you together with Eric Young and... I'm a I'm a huge TNA fan, especially in that time where he was part of Team Canada. Let's let's call it the rise of the X Division because I think so many indie wrestlers or wrestlers in general were influenced by HSI, Samojo, Chris Saban, and, and the list goes on and on and on, right? But also the program. And I remember Eric Young was such an entertaining guy, and also like a uh, great character and everything. And then just to meet this guy in person, and he's even a better dude than even you would think, right? So that was pretty exciting for me. And then in the end, they put us with Nikki Cross even together, because at that time, she was kind of like, you know, in the limbo, just try to find it out, try to figure it out, what could I do? Was already good, like very good in promos and wrestling. You know, she, she was a wrestler before in, in the UK scene, so she knew what to do. Uh, but also she became, even before Sanity, a very good friend to me because I have known her real-life husband, Big Demo. So, uh, yeah, it was cool. They put her with us together, a group of four, and something new because there's a girl inside, but not like a girly girl, more like a little savage. <laughs> and then in the end, um, unlucky for Sawyer Fulton, he tore his pack off, but he couldn't stop the train, as they said. So they put Big Demo in, and again, like I knew him from Germany. I was already like very good with him, and because Nikki and him, and they could tour together, and now like all three of them are very close to me. Like even I would say they're like one of my best friends because every time when we meet again, it's like we never split it up. So, and as you can tell, I'm I'm smiling when I talk about it. It was a very good time, and I cherish this time forever. 
that's that, that's fantastic. And uh, I'm going to assume they fall into that first category, the way you were talking about them. The, the, the love is certainly there. And uh, I'd say it's apparent in your actions now because uh, we're seeing you and Big Demo teaming up a little bit on the indies here, uh, yeah. both in the States and uh, abroad. Uh, is I don't want to obviously speculate on any future plans between you guys, but uh, with Eric Young back in TNA, and I, you know, I, I don't want to spoil anything, but certain rumors are saying the big guy is also going to be in TNA soon. Could we, is that a, is that an avenue you would like to explore for yourself? Oh, uh, there's a straight yes. Yeah. Because of course, uh, I said, so you always think about your career, right? And what you have done, what you have achieved. And I think I haven't achieved really something much right now. Uh, but I could kind of lay back and say, hey, I did this, I did that, blah, 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 right? But I think as a professional wrestler, you never stop learning and you never stop exploring some other routes on your career map. So um, I had the opportunity uh, just to, to be on the contract WWE for six years. Not only I had the opportunity to, to do something in front of the camera, also I learned from the best. Right, so I could give you a name of list where at least one of your favorite wrestlers would be there, where I had at least you know collected one advice. So that's great because I feel right now in the position I can use those tools. Right, it's kind of like you go from every uh, like job, and each job gives you one tool in your box, and then uh, you kind of like off you go. So. With TNA right now, is very interesting because TNA is back, right? So, and of course, EY is there. So, never say never, and everything is possible in this business of professional wrestling, right? But also, um, as you mentioned, like Big Damon and I, we came together as a team. But then, on kind of like, we, we teamed up together, I think, twice. And then they brought in EY. Yeah. To England, so we reunited Sanity as a whole. So a good friend of mine, he kind of like did the cover of the song, which is very great, which will be airing on Monday, this coming Monday, so on Spotify and everything. So awesome. Uh, everybody who follows me on social media, you will, you will see, you will, you will, you will have a link where you can click on it and just listen to the the new Sanity version song. It's awesome, especially if you like hardcore music. Um, no, but uh, yeah, progress resting. Those yeah. are the guys who made it possible, and also those are the guys who make it possible that I have applied today for another one uh, one year visa. So they give me a new visa, so I'm, you know, I'm legally allowed to work again in the United States. And I think a lot is to come in this year. Twenty four is very exciting, especially now with being just able to work legal in the States and Big Dave and I, we, we are all kind of like, you know, getting plans together, uh, try to make a schedule for some US tours and who knows where we end up or who knows what we uh, can achieve or what we can do. So it's, again, I, I know some things already, which I cannot uh, spoil, but I think, uh, yeah, future we will tell. Prize. So we're definitely looking forward to that. I mean, seeing you guys in the U.S. would be great. So hopefully yeah. all the stars align. And you yeah. Can... Well, I mean, one of, of oh, course, oh. Mania Weekend, right? Mania, Mania Weekend. That's why I come over in the first place. I will yeah. be over Mania. Um, also, I will uh, debut on Bloodsport. Josh Burnett is uh, a friend of mine. We connected uh, during my time in NXT and WWE. Um, Roddy, uh, Roderick Strong and I on, on one NXT loop, we went to the UFC gym where he trained his team and just, you know, trained with him together and um, I always call him my, my older brother from another mother because we kind of look alike and <laughs> like shoot star wrestling is also one of my favorites like that's kind of like what's in the ring comes a little bit because I, I used to train MMA and grappling BJJ as well and also like catch wrestling is very dear to me mm. Uh, probably not as skilled and as like as as kind of like have the knowledge like a Josh Barnett, 
because I, I think he's the goat of catch wrestling nowadays. But um, it's awesome. Like now, I have the chance to actually do that. Last year, I couldn't do it because uh, there were some, let's say, some issues with getting a visa. Mm. And this year, everything like the stars were aligned, as you said, um, that I got the visa now approved. And yeah, having the first um, match against no, actually the second match, but let's say let's say the first match on American soil against Timothy Thatcher and that Bloodsport event, so shoots are resting. So I'm very looking to forward uh, for that. But also, Progress will have a show uh, inside this uh, Game Changer Wrestling Collective uh, showcase, and yeah, some other things will come there as well afterwards so yeah we'll see i hope i will be very busy but also i will hope that i have the time to enjoy that and then you know follow up with some more tour dates well i'm sure it'll be very busy. i mean gcw blood sport I i've been to blood sport always a great event and to be on that card is very special so yeah and i love timothy thatcher james were we, you like timothy thatcher too oh, i mean i i saw this match and I thought it was going to be a hard-hitting one, but what interested me so much about it was how you described it on social media. You described it as a bucket list item that you were checking off. Yeah. And I, I didn't even think about it, but I know that it would be a match in terms of watching live. It's sort of a dream match of mine now to think about. I love that style, and I think you two are very well matched for it. But what I want to know is what specifically I you you praised it and I understood everything you were saying. But what specifically made this a bucket list match for you or a bucket list item for you? Um, the bucket a bucket list item is that I can debut legally, fair enough, and yeah. officially on Bloodsport because uh, I, I tried it when I was under WWE contract, but it was not possible. Yeah. And then when I got let go, I tried it as well. But again, like um, I, I, I didn't want to come over to the states as a tourist and then work and then eventually get caught and then get like a you know um, was a suspension for five years in there. So I could not whatever because you never know. Like it, it could happen uh, after five years if somebody contacts you for another bigger contract or can happen five days or something right so you always should treat it as a professional and not as a kid you know i'm i'm, I'm too mature now uh, <laughs> just to handle things in the right way but like also the bucket list match is that um again like i, I think it was 2013 or something where i had a shoot star match against timothy in germany for wxw because they have also like a tournament, uh, a shoot star tournament called Ambition. Mm -hmm. And it was the third Ambition. And I won that and I beat Timothy in the finals. But in that day, like he was, I think, little, like still a little bit new to wrestling and me as well, because I think it was the second year where I was more like, let's say professional, right? So I like, in the end, profession means you can live from that, but the majority of indie wrestlers in Germany cannot live from that. So you would say they're professionals if they have kind of like a certain amount of matches or they have like, I don't know, in that time I had each weekend at least one match. So you'd be more into the mix and you get the groove in. So you would consider the other guy, okay, he's professional, but also in the way of like how you behave and how you kind of like have you act together. That makes sense. So in that time, we both were kind of like still, you know, not really polished, mm -hmm. kind of diamond in the roughs, if you want to use that term. So now it's more interesting. We both older, but we more wiser. We have more experience, right? So we both did kind of like the same grind. Uh, I would say I, I did more the grind in WWE because in 2015 I was, you know, somebody in Germany, but probably nobody to the world independent wrestling scene, especially to WWE. Um, so I tried it in development, but Timothy grinded uh, in the indie scene. And then when he got kind of like hired 
by WWE when he got hired to NXT, he already was made and they didn't change one thing. Maybe just taught him where the cameras are and that's it. So, but the interesting thing is, and to get back to the bucket list thing is not only debuting on Bloodsport and have the chance to work there, but also, and in my mind, debuting against one of the best like shoot style wrestling uh, uh, wrestler, which is Timothy Thatcher. Well, I, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, a good amount of us here at the Market Town Podcast are going to be in Philadelphia for WrestleMania weekend. We so go. I'm hoping say to catch hello when you say me. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you mentioned before that you felt that you you could, if you chose to, to you know rest back on your laurels and what you've accomplished already. But you're also still very clearly hungry. Uh, what are things that now that we're all lucky enough to have you back here that, we, that you're hoping to accomplish? Oh, um, hoping to accomplish, of course. Um, I, I want to, I want to kind of like tour through the U S again, cause I really love like touring and like just traveling here and there and everything. And, um, uh, like the good thing, like touring in America, is like road trips because it's, it's kind of like this this one beautiful country has so many beautiful places, and they're so different for, from each other, right? If you go to Maine and if you go to Texas, it's like two different. It's like if 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 you would here in Europe go from Sweden to I- Italy, for example, yeah, weather wise, of course, but um, also like the the different cultures, right? If you're in Florida, for example, especially South Florida, it's more like uh, Spanish speaking, but then when you go, uh, let's say you go to Fort uh, Texas, different slang, right? But then you're in New York, you have also different slang. So it's like such a beautiful and big country. And I really love traveling there, even if you sometimes you take hours on, on the highway and everything. But I, I think when you have good company and everything, that's it's worth, but also enjoying like the American fans again, mm. because, uh, a lot of times you do not appreciate what you have until you have lost it. So, and now just I'm back in Germany and I really love to be back here home. And also I had the chance because of like the name I made in WWE to explore a little bit more continental Europe, central Europe. Um, so a couple of times in Italy, Naples, for example. So yeah, best pizza on the place, hands down. Nowhere else. You just um, made my family very happy. <laughs> yeah, and also the coffee, like espresso. Um, so France, for example, yada yada yada. I had the chance to go to uh, to travel uh, for work to Dubai and Qatar and like all those yeah. places uh, lately. Scandinavia. So a lot of good, beautiful places. But also, like I remember when I went to Cali. And then we had like somewhere like East Coast, something all like the towns. Philadelphia, for example, pretty exciting to go to come back to Philly because I love Philly. Um, Florida, I have the chance maybe to go down there. But like so many good promotions there. So it's kind of a lot of flies with one clap. And also if I have, if I have the chance to tour and travel again with Demo, because like we were a travel couple, like travel <laughs> wives and husband. So don't ask who was the wife and who the husband. That's a secret. <laughs> Probably. But like, <laughs> but in general, like I'm, I'm super excited because uh, yeah, life is good, and I'm super grateful for still having the health, having the hunger, having the drive, uh, just to do that. Even and also, I'm grateful for my wife because she's in the end like the ones who makes it possible. Because uh, life changed when you have kids, right? And if you have a supporting uh, high one, two, three, a supporting <laughs> wife in your life. Now just starting getting some bars down. Um, <laughs> then, you know, this life is possible and I'm super excited and yeah, we'll see. But like, I would say we let's go for, for tag team gold hunting. Uh, if it's something else, but at least have fun. Let's, let's find some places. Let's mix it up with some great talents, with maybe some some guys who've been around forever. I always would love to wrestle. Uh, I don't know. You have so many guys on the indie market or like being under contract, but being able to do indie markets, right? So it's 
it's again it's very exciting so at least let's have some dates there let's find a good place let's find a professional resting company who takes care of the workers in a good way um stuff like this because that's also like the shadow side on the, on the indie part that sometimes the rings are not good or environment is not as great as whatever but like let's find a good company let's find a good promotion whatever and let's tear the fucking house down well, I, I could selfishly say as a New Yorker, I would love to see you uh, do a lot of the New York indie scene. We have a lot of a lot of great companies out here, and I think you would there just you arrive here. But um, you, you mentioned before, uh, you know, all the new indie talent that you could uh, mix it up with. And you mentioned having already wrestled Timothy Thatcher, and that's a match that you're going to revisit. Are there any other uh, former opponents that you would love to mix it up with? Yeah. Um, continue. Sorry. No, no, Matt, you cut out a little bit. No, we're, we're having some technical difficulties oh, with Matt. My bad? My bad. Yeah. So what were you saying? Matt? I was I was saying, you were asking about um who we'd like to face, uh, Axel, and I was, just, I was jokingly saying, name some names, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, so when I remember when I kind of like tried to find my groove uh, in Germany, I was a regular on WXW. Mm -hmm. For those who don't know, WXW, uh, Westside Extreme Wrestling is the biggest company in Europe. I would say next to Progress because it's kind of, it's a, it's a company, an actual company, not just a dude who wants to spend some money on running a, an indie show during the weekend, if you have enough. But it's an actual company who, who do tours, who do a regular schedule on shows in different towns and have like a streaming device, yada, yada, yada. And 16 Carat Gold, for example, is the biggest tournament in Europe, which will be the next one this March. And I kind of became one of the regulars there, even if, if they had to pay a lot of money just to drive me in. Like Germany is not that big that you have to fly. Um, but it's like a six hours drive from east to west. West side extreme wrestling is in the west part of Germany. But um, anyway, like they put some thoughts in me and just something behind. And I remember uh, Walter, nowadays known as Gunter, he, he was very generous and he was like referring like to the office, I want to work with him because again, there was the ring comp connection. We had the same mindset for that what you want to do, that we treat it with respect and let's be kind of serious, not too serious, but like serious about that. Let's have fun with it, but just give 100% and just don't be a selfish egomaniac. Um, so it brought me a little bit more into the mix. But then uh, except you fed me some some guys, some so-called clients. Uh, a lot of times some Japanese guys uh, have weirdly a very good, like, chemistry with every Japanese wrestler because less talking, more like walking. But I remembered I had a match against uh, El Generico, which uh, helped me a lot developing myself. So Sami Sane, uh, you know, 2012 taught me so much in one match, right? So just the way uh, they call the match together, like they put a match together, how they call it, the transitions, right? The little Thought bridges, yada, 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 especially a guy like uh, Sami Sain. He has, and you can still see it to his day in his matches. He had, he put so much thought behind the structure of the match and what he does and like little details and everything. It's fascinating. Then also I had a match against David Richards, um, which also I kind of like took so much from. Um, Eddie Edwards was, was always, uh, also one of the guys, um, he tried to beat the shit out of me, but I'm very <laughs> stubborn in a lot of things. And, you know, I, I had a good childhood, so I knew how to take a being. Um, and then, yeah, so I also had a good school, like, like proper European wrestling school was kind of, you learn how to hit hard, but first you have to learn how to take some shots. So they toughen you up. It's mm. It's a good mix of like Japanese school and also like very traditional hard hitting training and everything. So I wasn't still to this day. That's why I probably love also this shoot wrestling style fight. I'm, I'm not afraid of getting hit hard and not afraid to hit somebody even like harder back or anything. But in general, um, those are like some names 
I have what, so many names, like again, like Japanese guys. Like, uh, I remember Daisuke Sikimoto was also one of the guys. If you're familiar with Japanese wrestling, uh, Big Japan wrestling, for example, very str insanely strong dude and like very nice guy, but also like very true professional athlete. And yeah, in the end, like I got um, Tosawa was also one of the guys, and then um, a very, very special match. Biff Busick. Biff Busick was a guy from the first moment on, I really liked him so much. And it's not often like in, in Germany that you right away click. Because like, again, I'm stubborn. Not because I'm this kind of guy. It's kind of because I'm I'm a German. <laughs> and we Germans are very stubborn a lot of things. So when I, when I came to America and this, you know, small talk, hey, how are you? I think, why you ask me that? Do we know each other? So, but like, if, if you really see somebody from the beginning and you like him, that's very special. And that was the thing with Biff Music. Like, I had one match with him where the entire German crowd um, was singing along his entrance music, which was, oh, something anthem from some kind of punk band. I have no idea. But... Anyway, so it's kind of like the I sound a little bit like the, the Seth Rollins theme when they always sing like this, whoa, whoa right? Yeah. So you, you have to imagine we battered each other for around 15 minutes and the <laughs> entire 15 minutes he sang the song and in the end, like he, there was some kind of a tournament and he beat my ass in that, but and everybody was happy and, you know, it was the pre mainer and in the mainer they're still singing. So such a special match, but also such a fun match with him. You know, so yeah, the list goes on. If I dive too deep in the thoughts, we probably need more hours for the podcast. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. I love Biff. I don't remember what his theme music was. Obviously, um, something, <laughs> uh, some a punk song, something at Anthem. Yeah. Did you? Uh, he was only Lorcan in NXT. Did you guys work together much in NXT? Yeah, I of course. Yeah, yeah, we, 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 um, I remember I was already there. Then he came through also. Then he got hired. Super happy with him. Again, awesome dude, like super chilled and such a, such a different guy, especially like it's very rare when you are on the wrestling scene and you have like 50 guys. And from the 50 guys, sometimes you have a group which is kind of like, you know, like a group of, I don't know, animals and, you know, Men's in general, sometimes they behave like, you know, who's the alpha, whatever, or just being miserable or whatever. But he always was nice. Even when he was miserable, he still was nice. You know what I mean? So everybody can have a bad day, but, you know, he was always great. Um, and then we also had the chance like to wrestle against each other a little bit on the EDs. Just, again, just had the same fun as we had in Germany. Oh, I love that. Uh, speaking, obviously, of your time in NXT and uh, your time in WWE in general, there, your time as Alexander Wolf uh, fluctuated a little bit. You know, we saw the differences in your time with uh, Sanity versus your time with Imperium. Would you say that? Uh, how would you compare the Alexander Wolf of then to the Axel Tischer of today? Oh, it's easy. So. Um... The Alex and the Wolf from Sanity was, of course, this fire starter, nutshell psychopath who would burn everything just to, you know, lure the people out that the big guy can't kill them. You know what I mean? But, yeah. you know, of course, I set the fire nut with the, with the lighter. I set it with a Molotov cocktail in the house, <laughs> you know, so I throw it on the ground and just run out burning and just been laughing. So, and, um, like a lot of people helped me creating that character. One of the guys was also Scotty Duarte, which is a great coach, also a better human, but also like a very, very creative guy with a lot of things, right? So he was the guy who made a, a shitty breakdance move famous, right? <laughs> so, and in the end, like um, I had like different bits and pieces and let's say some Easter eggs for myself inside the character. Because uh, I, I put a little bit of Joker in there, like Dark Knight version, but then also I put some some other like creations in there from uh, Mr. Rogers, for example. Oh, wow. So because 
the character I tried to get over before was a little bit like the Prey Wyatt, uh, Mr. Rogers character. And the idea behind was uh, German history. And everybody thinks German history right now, Nazi Germany. But for me as a German, it's like we have such a such a rich and, and nice history about this country, which is more than just world war, right? And I was thought about, because I lived in Orlando, about fairy tales, Disney, right? So, and the original fairy tales, like Snow White and Henchman and stuff like that, are from Brother Grimm, and Brother Grimm are from Germany. But the richer fairy tales are super sinister, super brutal, and whatever. I think Snow White got raped by the seven door uh, uh, little guys, right? Stuff like this, or there was uh, a fairy tale uh, about a wolf who wants to eat seven baby goats, mm -hmm. and then he did eat six of them, and the seven stooged it to the mom, and the wolf was sleeping, so they cut off the, the stomach, pulled out the baby goats, and filled it up with stone, and threw the wolf into the river, so he drowned. So that's fairy tales for kids. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, or there was some, like, uh, uh, they called it Strubelpeter. Strubel, so it's kind of like filthy peat. Okay. And filthy Pete was uh, a boy who did not want to, you know, take a take a bath or yeah. have to clip his nails, whatever, till the point like they killed him or whatever, like like weird fairy tales. But that was Brother Grimm, and Brother Grimm was like the the original version. But Disney was everything about singing and dancing. And I thought, of course, I will be the heel as a German, especially with my looks and everything. So let's let's try to be like the bad fairy tale uncle. And then I saw Mr. Rogers. So then I tried to be like this kind of guy who explains obviously things, but just do it in a creepy way, right? So, but then it didn't work out really. I was trying to figure it out here and there. But then sanity came around, so I took a little bit of Mr. Rogers as well. That's why I I kind of like when you see like vignettes or you see um, like promos we did that's why I kind of wandered around a little bit in the, in the back just be kind of a little bit more creepy and just mm. not too aggressive because I was not the biggest of the group but also I was not the leader of the group so I always tried to find something where I could stood out somehow from like four other persons mm. um, so but this was like how to become this character right so what could I do? It's like they told me, stop wrestling. Don't do any wrestling moves, even if you like it. If you if you're good in it, you have to see. You don't grab a hold. You try to pull his eyes out, mm. right? His eyeball, or you try to bite his nose, or pull the teeth out, or whatever stuff like this. So you have to think like a psychopath. Okay, let's let's see. Then of course, America has a lot of psychopaths, a lot of serial killers. Um, what could I use, right? And I took stuff what I liked, I took it from like those characters. And also like I listened to a lot of hot crew music. So one of my favorite bands is Stick to Your Guns. So I was, you know, pulling out some lyrics from you know for for promos and everything. Um so again psychopath character, mm. lunatic, firestarter and definitely not somebody you want to be in the room with together. <laughs> and even even just sitting across the table, I was making sure when I was in character, I make you feel uncomfortable as possible, and, and I'm just smiling. Mm. The Perium Alexander Wolf was more like um, a ruthless, cold-blooded, sadistic. Mm. That's why also like that's like the thing. Uh, the thing. Um, I have sometimes when I when I have like liking for something, I have a very sadistic smile, so I cannot hide that, and I used it also uh, because it's organic. I used it also for the Alexander Wolf uh, thing because I thought like, okay, I'm I was the hatchet man of the group, mm. so the man for the dirty work, right? Mm -hmm. The other guy doesn't want to have blood on his hand. I don't care, right? But then in the end, it's kind of like this time I'm not such a lunatic. This time I'm more calculated. Are more efficient right mm -hmm. so more like european efficiency german efficiency but also i knew what i will do what i have to do just for the sake of 
protecting uh, protecting the group and just you know protecting the values of this great sport so it was more like a toned down version a very toned down version yeah. but in the end it was uh, maybe more dangerous than the sanity one because the Did sanity you... one was sometimes playing with the knife instead of stabbing the other one would take it and just get the job done in no time that's a great comparison uh, did, did you enjoy exploring these darker elements? You, you seemed you, you seem passionate about it. Yeah, of course. Like it's 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 the the part of morphing, right? Mm. Uh, and it always um, like I feel with music, for example, when I hear a song and music, and I feel that I feel it hundred percent goosebumps, and you know, so stuff like this, and it always helped me to transition from me into character mm. and when you hear the ninth symphony of the work right mm. then this one first tone and then you in this character and just thinking about it get goosebumps but it's that you have the music and then you get the reaction from the crowd and you give them something back and then you get even more the reaction the same as with sanity as soon as you hear the helicopter and like the police uh, um, like the police walkie talkies talking, you know, then you're getting into this, oh, let's, let's create some chaos, right? So this is kind of like this, like, and, and funny, like everybody had kind of like a little bit an experience with something which was out of control. Mm. Uh, Demo, for example, he grew up in Ireland when they had like this civil war, mm. right? When they, like, Probably he got beaten by adults on his way to school and stuff like this, right? Mm. And I knew where, how it was growing up like in Eastern Germany after the war came down, where everybody who lived in a different uh, regime, where they had to kind of like feel the vibes of, all right, so what can we do? What, should, what shouldn't we do? Et cetera, et cetera. So it was kind of like a Wild West situation. And I grew up in that part where it just, you know, the city was still a bit destroyed by the Second World War, so you mm. still had like this, like brick house buildings who've been bombed. Mm. So um, sometimes you went to places like old Russian military bases where you just played, and they told us don't go there because they have some landmines still there, which was just a rumor, just to prevent us, like the, the, the kids, from climbing over the walls and everything. But still, like bob wire around and stuff like this and all those cars and stuff so that was like a playground mm. but it's kind of like growing up in an environment where there was no cell phone there was not uh, any like comfortable life it was a good life there was mm. food on the table but you learned how to climb a tree because you had to run away from the bigger kids or you get beat right stuff like this or uh like and when i got older like just you know uh, getting into fights uh, getting into kind of riots because it's kind of like exciting. Oh, look at there. It's like the police. Yeah, let's 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 fuck around with them. And then it turns it turns out into a riot. And then you see your friend is like in there and you go in there and just something like that, right? And in Germany it's a lot of stuff like this because the police guys are way nicer than your police over there. So Once they don't have to, they're not allowed to shoot right away and they actually have a good training. So uh, they 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 when the riot police comes out, it's always like a cat and mouse game, especially with, uh, with, with, with soccer here, with hooligans and everything. So when you grow up, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's sometimes you get into all the cage where it's kind of like where, you, where your parents kind of like say, why? <laughs> and, and how and I don't know and you explain like this that and they kind of like don't do that again or you want to end up in jail or whatever like stuff like this so nothing really major because in the end like I was lucky enough to find to wrestling that was kind yeah. of like my my saving uh, point where I was so focused on becoming a wrestler that I missed out on all the bad stuff but like it, it's like a lot of times like you did something and that you bring that into a character or I remember there was like a street like fest close where I grew up and out of nowhere it started out to become this tradition that every year on the street fest the night from Sunday to Saturday 
there's a fight with all like the police in town. So it starts into a big ass riot with fire and everything where, you know, they go nuts and the other guy go nu- uh, guys go nuts. So really huge riot. So it's kind of like, yeah, it's insane. But anyway, so <laughs> just seeing that and everything, just creating kind of like this emotional recall where I could like easily switch over to the sanity character because then I think like, let's have a riot, let's go nuts, let's go crazy. What can happen? Nothing because I'm inv- uh, invincible right now, right? So it helps, it helps. Sounds exciting. Sounds like things escalated. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm almost speechless, but I mean, that, given the world of wrestling, it doesn't sound that far off. Um, no, but I do, no, I, I, hmm. I do feel obligated as an American at this point now for two to apologize for all the psychopaths that we have produced and to apologize for all of our police here. So no, no, no. <laughs> oh, don't don't get me wrong. I don't want to uh, spread this uh, narrative. I nothing no, no, of course police, not. Nothing at all. Just give you more of them, but just give you more better trained. You know, so that's a thing. I have a lot of friends. They they. Um, they used to train together with police and everything, and the majority does not even know how to take somebody in a proper way down. They're underpaid and under trained, so they need a proper training. And I know, for example, the police guys in Germany, you need to be able just to pass a fitness test and you need to be able at least to defend yourself. And even if you go to boxing or if it's Krav Maga, or you choose it, you name it. But they have to do that because. Again, if I'm in front of a policeman and uh, he fears for his life right now, guess what? He has a weapon. I don't, yeah. right? So that's that's a, such a weird scenario. So nothing against policemen at all. Yeah, of course, um, not. Of course not. So, but and also the psychopath you guys produced in the end they came from Europe. So don't no need to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> full circle. Yeah, right. Full circle. Yeah. Um, Going back a little bit to uh, what you were describing, uh, you know, some of the traditions in East Germany and just, I guess, uh, some of the chaotic nature of that. that. That's something that I feel you guys really did a great job of getting across in uh, Sanity and NXT. Yeah. When you guys made the jump to the main roster, I feel that a certain element, I don't want to say was missing, but there was certain character character details that got lost in translation did you find Nikki there... cross <laughs> <laughs> that that was one of them lost I, in I, NXT, you, you yeah. want to say. I, I i i wasn't even speaking specifically about her but yes i do think she was an integral part of that but what did you find in that transition from nxt to the main roster um i give you a short answer but then i i kind of like give you some details the short answer is different guy who runs the show yeah. So again, we were one of Trova H's idea and creation. So that's why automatically he took care of us because he wanted that his idea will work. Yeah. You find it some you, you found some guys who can make it work. So now it's, let's put the train behind it and let's keep going. Um, SmackDown, main roster, not so much because two things. I think number one was creative wasn't that no it's always like good timing perfect place etc etc it was not the best timing for us just to get a call up we should have stayed in nxt for at least one year or longer okay um just to explain a little bit more the crew just to get some details right so if you if you watch the tv series and you watch the first season and then the second season is probably, you know, continue the gimmicks, the gig, you know. But like the third, then you explain some characters, right? It's not the main actor. You already know the main actor. But then how about that guy? Or why is this guy important for the crew or whatever, right? So the little details. I think that was missing in Sanity. Um, and we did not have the time for that. Uh, showcasing everybody, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Because then later, if you see what Nikki Cross did in NXT, she had the time for that. They put some thought behind it, explained why, or showcased her in the way of like, oh, she's passing out. 
in a in a sleeper hold. She's not tapping. She passed out, but with a smile in her face, right? And she stopped smiling because she wasn't there anymore. So such a character treat, right? Um, but with SmackDown was the thing. We got the call up because sanity was hot. And as I remember correctly, they told us, yeah, um, Vince says, give me a group of names who would be ready just to come up. Then he gets the group of names and then he says, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. Okay. So apparently he liked us, but apparently he didn't like the women in the team because he thought that's stupid. Apparently, I don't know for sure. He never told me. So, um, and then also in the end, they had an idea for us, but they booked themselves into the corner mm. with the Blotchen brothers because right now they were, were undestructible and unbeatable, yada, yada, yada. So they told us after Mania in New Orleans, hey, you guys will debut. Then it was meant we debut on Money in the Bank. And then it was somewhere in SmackDown, but then they run out, out of time for live television. Then should be there, should be here, should be against them, should be against them. So they danced the limbo around us, and we just been there already getting paid, doing some house show run-ins, whatever. But I think we lost the advantage of now is the perfect time. And as Shamaiga said, sometimes you have an idea, which is right now the worst idea ever. Two months later, it's the best idea ever. It's yeah. just the timing for creative, right? And I thought they have something good for us because, and that's also what I had to learn, uh, empty promises because the one to keep you happy. If they tell you, hey, they don't have anything for you and they have even no idea what to do with you, but hang in there, something is coming. Sounds less promising than, oh good, they love us, they want to do something for you, they just have to wait for the best time where you can go, go up and skyrocket and whatever. Right? You will be on every show, yada, yada, yada. But in that time, you don't know that they're just saying it just to keep you calm. I understand that, right? But you know, if you don't know, you think, they have ideas. Yeah, let's fucking go. But in the end, it wasn't that much. Um, in the end, I think, and a lot of guys told us that Vince is a guy, he sees one thing he doesn't like and everything is shit. Mm. So apparently something was somebody at the crew, somebody in the crew did something he didn't like, then he did not pay attention. Yes, I mean, it is what it is. You cannot change it. The only thing is kind of like you learn from the mistakes you did if you did some. But everybody does mistakes. And in the end, you have to work towards the guy who pays the checks, right? So, yeah. Um, but then in the end, it was, we, we, we kind of like made them know, hey, let's go back to NXT. Mm. Let's do here. Let's do that. And it was so off, like, in that time, because I remember there was a Europe tour, and they had Nikki coming out as a UK talent facing mm. back in Lynch in the Open Challenge. And there was Tyson Kidd who said, hey, let them come out with their guys. Which guys? They did not even knew that we were together in NXT. Nobody knew. So that's far from, from NXT to Bayro. So I don't think it's right now the same. Because Hannah right now is in charge, which yeah. is, you, as you can see, is for the better. Um, but at that time, uh, we had to kind of like sit there and just wait. We did the necessary. We did the stuff we could control. We were creative. We had ideas. Even they said to us, yeah, it's two hours TVs. It's hard to get everybody on TVs. We knew, hey, let's do something on social media. Let's be active. Let's do something. But at the end, we did it for our own. And maybe that was the part where it completely lost interest in us because if you try to get over by yourself, it wasn't that much liked. Mm. Probably nowadays, not, as, uh, not anymore. Nowadays, more like open. Like the atmosphere in general, when I talk with guys, it's, it, it's amazing and it's refreshing and everybody's really, let's go together. Right, but I remember at that time, like time was good, so not not completely waste. We had great times, uh, house shows. We had the chance to work with like Usos, New Day, Good Brothers, Bludgeon Brothers, yeah. James Cesaro, Dana Bryan, H Styles, like all like those guys, like great experience and great locker room and everything. And WWE in general, like great company. 
but at that time it was not our time and mm. i always describe nxt as the the rock version of the hip-hop mainstream mm. version which is the main roster you know so you, sometimes you can cross it over but a lot of times it's like two different pair of shoes so you know if, if you wear your jeans to your uh, leather boots it probably fits but if you wear leather boots to your chucking pants it looks like you know <laughs> trailer park <laughs> <laughs> So uh, one of the things, and I, I know I mentioned it earlier, but I, I really do want to reiterate it based off this conversation. You have such a love for this business. And if if you don't mind me saying, you have what, in my opinion, is a very healthy mindset when it comes to everything you've experienced and everything you're looking forward to accomplishing. Uh, one of the things that I could say from my perspective, which is obviously going to be different than yours, you know, like I said, we're a bunch of marks here. Uh, there tends to be a lot of negative discourse in the wrestling community and the wrestling fan base. Uh, sometimes it's, you know, whether it's tribalism or whether it's uh, some of the unfortunate news that comes out. Uh, one of the big things that just came out this week was, you know, and I don't like putting him on this, but uh, O'Shea Jackson Jr. was uh, got a lot of um, a lot of flack for what he was saying about AEW and about how the introduction should be in gatekeeping when it comes to wrestling. Uh, what positive message would you like to put out there to the fans, to people who just want to enjoy what you guys do and what you offer to us? Just, just watch wrestling. That's the main thing. Like in the end, if if again the three categories, right? Mm -hmm. But all like three categories are inside this bubble. You call yourself you're a bunch of marks, but you're part of this bubble. You're also inside of this bubble. And for me, like the thing is with professional wrestling, right? Um, it's it's a beautiful thing, right? And for somebody who performs in the ring, yes, it hurts. And yes, it takes a lot of sacrifice, not just the physical, not just the mental, also like sometimes like um, like time, money, you know, friendships, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you spend hours and days sometimes traveling to a wrestling event, right? So the whole world will meet up in Philadelphia for WrestleMania 40. Again, every once a year or twice a year or whatever. Right, so so many people spend their hard-earned money just to meet up and celebrate that one thing we all love, and that's wrestling, right? So, and now, of course, same as in American football, same as in European football, soccer, same as basketball, whatever. You pick a team because you're part of a team. In wrestling, it's not a team. It's more like a promotion, right? Mm. So now it's, again, it's like it's wrestling is art. It's sports entertainment. It's pro sports. It's pro art. And again, that's compared to music, right? But I never seen anybody go to a, a Metallica uh, festival and bitch about the music because <laughs> where's the Wu-Tang, right? So <laughs> stuff like this. But with wrestling, it's I think a lot of people they take themselves too serious inside the ring, outside the ring, especially like with the fans, because a lot of people probably never had a voice and now they have one. Now somebody's listened to them because they are in the same bubble and they have the same interest, right? So and I think it's it's human, you know, natural thing that you complain. Right. The only thing is you complain about what you complain about. Let's say you did not like the match because as you beautiful always say, like, right. In, in, in your perspective, because everything, uh, like, there is, there's not, a, there's not a wrong or right in resting. In my opinion, the wrong or right is if you do it right, you probably make a lot of money. If you do it right, you probably be a champion somewhere or you are successful with your company. That's the right. The wrong is you draw no dime because it's a business, right? But like for fans, potato, potato. You like green? Yeah, awesome. You like blue? Perfect. But blue is not better as green because you think green is better. 
in your mind, it's better because you're more fan of green. And I think it's the same, let's say, tribalism. WWE fans, AW fans. WWE lost a lot of fans to AW because they gave them what they wanted to see. More sports-oriented, probably a little bit more blood and guts, um, style wrestling, mm. right? You see blood. Uh, and now you, you see color and you always want to see color. You missed the Attitude Era and you, you have enough from PG. Okay, cool. But also, I'm, I'm more fan of PG because from the business perspective, it's smarter. Also, I have kids. So I think when my son is watching wrestling, it's probably better that he's not seeing a guy like Crimson Mask on, that he sees a guy who's, you know, maybe a guy like Cena, where I see, oh, look at him. You know, he, he could be a role model and everything. So it's, ev everything is like so objective, but like in general, have fun with wrestling. You like wrestling? Awesome, cool. What do you like for wrestling? This wrestling? All right. Don't watch this if you like, if you like this. Watch this because you're, you're set to me. You like this. Don't watch the other thing and don't complain. I told you, don't watch it. It's not for you. Watch this. And I think that's all. And also like, don't be dicks. Don't be egos. Don't be assholes. Just be nice to each other. Again, think about it. you travel so long, you travel so much, you spend so much of your hard-earned money. Enjoy. If you if you be at home, watch it on telly. If if like for example, like a lot of times, I always say uh, say like we wrestlers, we are basically the biggest marks because a lot of times if we critique ourselves or if you critique our co co-workers we go so much into details some of the people don't realize it right so and it's even with us sometimes i watch wrestling and i cannot skip out the working part out of it yes. it's very rare where i can uh, enjoy it as a fan but like nowadays especially with wwe like i can lay back and just just enjoy the ride of just being interested actually in the program again, especially when I see my friends just performing like Gunther and Ludwig. Yeah, like it's awesome to see them be successful. So I'm, I'm kind of like can lay back and don't have to be kind of like too much into the let's see what I don't like, right? So, and I think a lot of people are a little bit like more pissed if the other teams win wins more, but it's not about a championship. And it's also like also two different worlds when you see AEW, they are great, but they they are not in the business as long as like those over something three decades. Is it three decades? Four decades? WWE, WWF. So yeah, yeah, yeah we're in four. It's it's insane to compare them just because they're on on television at the same time, yes. right? And a lot of times you have to realize it's a business. So sometimes. If they shoot against each other, there could be an agenda behind it, right? And and a lot of things, like we see it in Germany right now, wrestling in general is booming again. More people come to the venue, more people are willing to spend money for tickets, for merchandise, more promotions open up. Sometimes for the good, a lot of times for the bad. But <laughs> in, in general, like you see wrestling is booming again because people willing to spend money, people willing to come to the venue. Like it's amazing. And I think that's the, the, the major takeaway from that. You like wrestling and now you're pissed because the different promotions also on TV. Why be happy? Because that means more jobs for wrestler and also more if, if you want to if you want to watch wrestling 24 7 now's your chance because you can not only watch it uh, 24 7 on the network on demand but also basically every day in the week you can watch a wrestling show like a tv show everywhere i guess right yeah where, where, there where, was where, one period that you had even like two shows in one day or anything but yeah with the uh with the start of this podcast i have basically quadrupled the amount of wrestling that i watch and i yeah. love it i adore it but i'm exhausted <laughs> yeah but, you watch it in uh 1.5 speed or 
Oh, I wish. No, I, I every second, every second is coming yeah. in here. So okay. I, who needs basic things like math or world events? You know, I, I've got my professional wrestling intake. Yeah, I know, I know a lot of guys that do the reviews and they watch it like in uh, Speed 2.0. Uh, uh, so it's kind of everything. Like, you know, so <laughs> that they see kind of like the what's happening. Oh, that's interesting. Normal speed, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm a student. I, I'm a student of the game personally. I I love the nuances of everything. I can't, I don't have it in me to skip anything or to to do things at one point five. I know me. I'm gonna miss something. And it's the thing what 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 keeps you on track because you want to see how this story evolves, how this story ends, and whatever. Yeah. I totally get you. Like again, like I I used to watch Monday Night Raw every time. Uh, I I had like it like something like. A guy who had like the Sky account, so he kind of like passed me over every week. And then SmackDown came, and then I was like, ah, oh, no, I don't want to watch it anymore. And then he showed me one little clip of it, so hooked again. Like it's, <laughs> it's like the soap opera thing, right? Well, we are now is a great time to be watching. You know, whether it's WWE or any other company, like you said, we are everything. In- that we are Everything. in that mania season right now. And that's when I think things tend to pick up no matter what company you're a part of. So yeah. I, I have to ask, you mentioned him. He's, you know, a buddy of yours. Um, there's a lot of eyes right now on Gunther and his journey to WrestleMania. And I think he's probably one of the hottest acts in the company right now. Yeah. Uh, do, do you, what's your perspective on how far he's reached? And at one point he was rumored to have a match with uh, Brock Lesnar that doesn't seem to really be on the cards anymore, but uh, are you happy for all of his success or what are you looking forward to from him and the rest of your friends? Um, I'm, I'm super happy for Gunther in general for the entire group. Um, a lot of people always like ask me, you're not jealous or anything now. Um, uh, he, he, I, I would never been on his position because I'm not him, mm. and he is a very special person, I believe, um, because he's he's very dedicated to what he's doing, and he is a guy who is not, let's say, who's not very keen on doing anybody's favor. Mm. If that makes sense. So the way he is, he's since day one, right? Probably, probably not as skilled as much because he always took a lot of like um, out of like his indie run and everything. So he formed his craft like years after years after years. And right now, it's for him the perfect timing just to cement his legacy there, and rightfully so. And so far, so good. Longest reigning in the Continental Champion, and in my mind, one of the best wrestlers in the entire world. Um, like his style is very unique, but if you, if you, it's kind of like a newer version of like the old school Japanese, all Japan hard hitting style, but like with a little bit like sprinkled of like new school in there, but like, it's very basic, but like he makes an easy and, and simple hold as a Boston grab. He makes it so efficient and so like means something, right? So and I believe, like, also, I know he's a very intelligent guy. Mm. Uh, and so I know that he's really thinking about the stuff he's doing. That's why he delivers all the time. Like, And now, like, the other stuff will come across as well. He's a good talker, right? Mm. Because he has time to think about that because the other stuff, it's down there, right? And he can match it up with every guys. And in my opinion, it's probably an unpopular opinion, but of course WWE gets more five-star rating matches because Meltzer is a big Japanese guy, right? He loves Japanese wrestling. Mm -hmm. And if you see his uh, five-star rating matches, a lot of like all Japan wrestling, pro wrestling, no matches get rated five-star. So now you have a guy who looks apart, who's tall, who is in shape, who has charisma, even if it's like his Austrian charisma, but it's mm-hmm. charisma he has, right? It's not He's not dancing around or anything. And if he does something a little bit like this, then it's like everybody picks up on it. So everything mm-hmm. is, everybody is watching him. What is he doing next? Even if they do apparently, you know, see it coming, smack, kick, 
whatever. So he is always like sticking to his guns, but he always gets better with it. Mm -hmm. So that's why like he's world championship material already. So, and who knows who will dethrone him if somebody will dethrone him. Or maybe he vacates the title and goes straight for the world title, whatever. But I definitely next year, I, w I would not be wondering if he would be the guy in the main event, mm -hmm. even if he would win the Rumble and go to the main event. But I think like when he continues and he stays healthy, which I believe he stays he healthy because, again, his style is so unique to nowadays, but it's so... like good to work with because you could work every day in that kind of style. Sometimes you turn it up a notch. Sometimes you maybe do not as much as a pay-per-view match, but you always could do the same and deliver. You don't have to do any flip bombs or whatever, right? You're never in the risk of uh, you roll over your angle or anything. So again, like super happy for him. And I'm still, you know, wishing him the best. And I know he will use every bit of energy of thought and of time on telly just to to make the best out of it to just profit make it makes it more profitable and even now he's a father so he has to take care of one mouth more right you have to feed one mouth more put food on the table <laughs> no definitely and uh it, we we've spoken you've spoken about family quite a bit so far here on the podcast i i do have to ask what what is it like being a wrestling dad? Like, does 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 your child know daddy's a wrestler? Like, is that something that processes? Yeah. Yeah. Of course, uh, I I have a five year old son and a one and a half year old daughter. Oh, wow! And he, so I have my own wrestling school here in Dresden, and a lot of times I take him to wrestling class. So I I do like I train my students, and then he's kind of in between the mix, and he already sees like stuff. He came to one wrestling show. Um, he knows it. He likes it. He wants to. Oh, sorry. Ooh. You're good. Okay. Sorry. We've got you he, late. We've got you late. I know. I'm sorry. Um, um, he he wants to become a wrestler as well already. So I ask oh, him, what do you want to do for a living? What do you want to become when you uh, when you get older? I want to do uh, want to want to do wrestling like you do. So yeah, why not? Um, but. In general, like it's it's great though because for me it's my sacred haven. Yeah, it's my 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 mental castle when I let's say yeah everybody struggles here and there, but it's always one it's my happy place right next to family stuff. But sometimes it gets stressful in life, and then you go back into your bubble and you know you be happy again. And then you refresh yourself and then you go back into your real life and then you're happy as well. So, and like, it helps me a lot. And again, like uh, my wife helps me just to still be a professional wrestler and just, you know, give me the opportunity to provide for the family with wrestling. And then so far so good. And my son likes it. He's not super interested right now. Mm. Like again, he's five. I was around six when I got interesting, but um, yeah, sometimes he sees it. And now just an example today, we have like, a, like a ginormous teddy bear. Right? It's like, I don't know, probably almost his height. Yeah. So today he, he kind of dragged him through the living room and dropped an elbow on him. So <laughs> I don't know. It, it, it's, all it's, it's all in the genes. It's all in the genes, apparently. Probably, but uh, I will probably will think, oh, my son will be the wrestler, but in the end, my daughter will be, will become the wrestler. <laughs> you know, like life always taking those turns. Yeah, well, whatever. As, as long as they want to do it, I support them. If they want to do something else, I support them. So great. Well, I. I appreciate so much of your time today. I want to end on a high note. If if you'll uh, if you'll indulge me, you obviously we have so much more to look forward to in your career. We're looking forward to seeing you at Bloodsport. We're looking forward to seeing you uh, touring here in the United States very soon and hopefully all over. But going to the past one last time, uh, those laurels that you don't want to rest on. What would you say is the highlight? What would you say is if if tomorrow, God forbid was the last day 
what's the thing you're most proud of with your career? And it could be a moment or it could be just something you've accomplished. Um, so I'm, I'm proud that I'm basically the first German wrestler who got really signed to contract to WWE. That's a thing where I think that's cool. Cause, um, I remember like there was one bodybuilding guy. He was signed to WWF like Prackers, but it was just for a cup of tea, a <laughs> cup of coffee. Um, <laughs> But at that time, there was uh, no guarantee contracts, if I, if I'm not mistaken. But um, just to be a guy, uh, just to get signed by WWE after I passed basically the tryout, where they were looking for a German guy, and, you know, blonde and blue eyes and everything. But I think it was just more than the looks, but also like the way like I'm I like behaved in that time um, because but I'm, I'm I can be very serious when I want to but I could be the, the biggest goofball in the, in the in the entire planet if I want to as well I think I was very like stoic and very like serious mm-hmm. and that time which was a little bit very Germanish because we Germans don't have fun um, and, yeah and also I, I, I believe it was also a thing where I worked my ass off just to, to you know, made, made a name in the developments and show them, hey, this is what it's kind of like me and some other guys are made of and which maybe op- opened the door for all like the other guys from the German market who came through and now just being contracted. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But um, that's one of the things. And then, of course, like um, the way that like, kind of like I... I had like three years at the performance center and they told me three years at the performance center, then you should be on the main roster. And I did that. Um, I had the chance to show them I can work so that they don't had to kick my ass just to okay get better into the ring. They kind of gave me the opportunity to explore more of the parts where I wasn't good at. So like I'm very proud of that I could present myself already as, oh yeah, we don't have to think about him that he's not good in the ring or anything. We just have to find something for him that it can work. And then in the end, they gave me something and I picked it up and made it possible. So sanity. Um, and of course, like the acolytes, like tag team, or, uh, uh, tag team of the year, the NXT tag team championships we won in Brooklyn. We were. Um, I was there for that actually. I just wanted to. Yeah, I was in the audience for that. So that's a memory. That that was such a special night. That was that. That was the night where I had a little celebration for myself. I went back to Gorilla, and they told me, "Yeah, uh, the German newspapers there. They want to do an interview at Still Photos. So go to Still Photos, make new pictures, and do the interview, please. Cool." And I was in the hallway by myself, and I did a little. That, that's it. That was my celebration. So I was just, got it. Let's move on. Um, and then also a very special match where I even have like my little scar from it was uh, the War Games match. The first ever in WWE War Games match. And they gave us this opportunity. And I think we killed it in that match. It was a fun match. And especially like we could play in with our characters so good. We're bringing in the weapons. And everything because we thought we cannot wrestle like the Undisputed Era. We're not like those mean machine guys like the Authors of Pain or whatever. What could we do? Let's bring your son Chaos. Let's bring the weapons. Yeah. And I remember they gave me the police nightstick and I used to train self defense and I used to train with this son bitch. So I, I knew how to kind of like do some tricks with it, like Big Boss Man. Um, yeah, that was fun. Like the creative part of that, especially getting busted open. Click, Bleeding like a pig. Oh, man. <laughs> that was fun. Especially it did not hurt at all, but they couldn't show it. So, no, but yeah. it was fun. Like, it, 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 it definitely was a special moment for me. Um, I, wished, I, I wished I would have accomplished a little bit. So, like, bucket list was also Rumble and WrestleMania, of course. Um, and tag team titles at the main roster. But I'm pretty happy with... Uh, how it worked out in NXT and especially it's not, not something which I would present when I would, you know, pass away tomorrow, but uh, 
it's like the little things, like the camaraderie in NXT, uh, or like the guys when we toured together one bus. Um, there was not really somebody from category one uh, uh, or like category three, like the not so good category there. It was <laughs> like a good mix, like of number three and or number one and number two, right? So that was it was a good thing, and even like the house show loops, like we had so many great nice matches. I don't know, Senate against Undisputed Era. Like, we had that for maybe a month or so. That was so fun because people went into the entire match and we had so many things, like, we could try out and whatever. Like, so, like, in general, like, a great time. But, yeah, like, so much. <laughs> that War Games match, man. I, I kind of, I missed the three versus three versus three. But, I mean, it's come along, like, it was always big but it's only just gotten bigger. And I mean, it all started with you and sanity and the, the other six guys in that match. So yeah. I remember the build up to that was amazing. Yeah. Uh, uh, where, where, where they, I, I think it was, yeah. TVs in, in full sale where Riga came out and he said, war games. Right. So the first time he <laughs> said it, but like he said, it's enough. We, we are at the brawl. And he, he kind of like announced everybody to it. And everybody was kind of like, us and he said like sanity and i was like celebrating myself because i knew what he wanted to say like <laughs> be like ah. and then walk in and we just be like ah and everybody's like no and just just the atmosphere just to 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 imagine like how how what, just to know how i felt in that moment like for real and just uh, uh, that's that's a little little story um they ha they had the cages up right mm -hmm. so they had like three cages and we were in this one cage. And when you watch it back, there was Damo and myself was the last team who come in, came in. So, and I think it was like the last seconds of it and everything. And Damo and I, we start rattling up in the cage, just in the cage, just kind of like, you know, rocket chair back and forth or whatever, 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 just we want to get out, we want to get out. But true story, I was in the cage and usually what you do when you kind of get nervous or anything, especially in wrestling, when you talk about matches, whatever, a lot of guys pacing back and forth, back, back and forth because they cannot sit still or stand still. But with the cage, you did not have a lot of space to move, right? And also big demo is a big lot. So I stood still. And we kind of like, you know, we knew the camera was there. We in the character and we still talking You try to watch from far. But then I kind of felt like my legs and my arms get numb. <laughs> so com I couldn't feel my toes. I couldn't feel my fingers. So, and that's why I'm kind of like being here and just being back just to get the, the, the blood cycling back into my legs because I knew I have to run down. <laughs> and I did not, I did not want to want to kind of like, fall out and trip and could not walk because my legs wouldn't be there because I know like in... master. we lost um, you there you nah. didn't want to do a shock master yeah yeah no no shock one <laughs> that would be yeah goodbye <laughs> retirement <laughs> no but uh, and then when it was time like okay now I can go now I can go they did not really had like you know they couldn't open the lock <laughs> oh so they hit there and just with the key and just, ah, oh, fuck, 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 what now? And again, if you watch it back, you see me kind of like kicking the door open because I saw like, it's just like a metal lock, fuck it, right? So as soon as he kind of had it a little bit undone, I was fuck it, and just push the door <laughs> open. And the entire thing, it looked like kind of like, yeah, it's kind of selling, right? You're in there, you're painting like the animal, you want to, you know, unleash the animal, yada, yada, yada. You kick off the door and then you sprint through. And as soon as the door was open, I had to sprint. Otherwise, I probably would lost, I have uh, would have lost my feeling in my legs again, you know, just for just standing still the entire time. But then when I paced down at the ring and I just went in there and I did like the, I have a gun spot with the, with the, <laughs> yeah. gun farm, with the, with the nightstick, stuff like this. Like, ah. so <laughs> then I was already there and I was in the zone, but like, that's that's one of the moments I remember even from the match, which probably nobody knows. So now you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's always those little intimate moments that we hold on to, I think, sometimes. Oh, yeah. But uh, thank you so much, Axel. Uh, I 
this has been truly one of the most fun conversations I've had when it comes to professional wrestling. So thank you for giving us your time. Uh, before we let you go, we've already talked about a lot of things coming in the future, but uh, is there anything you wanted to hype up before uh, before you go? Um, yeah, so um, it's not that I plan to retire, but it's always about what you do after resting, right? So, But I want to stay into resting. So again, as I told you, I have a resting school in Dresden, Germany. It's one of my things I want to do when I retire active in the ring. I want to train people, want to mentor people, want to pass on my knowledge just to help them get better or evolve in their career. Also, I do wrestling shows now, just, you know, want to do kind of like wrestling shows where I um, give people a chance to, you know, perform on anything, just create something in my area here. So East Germany, do something, smaller towns, local towns, uh, family friendly, but still like good action wrestling. Give somebody a wrestling fan at the show. It's kind of like at least one match is something for you. So not all the matches are the same. There's like yeah. difference. You know, I, I try to um, get out my inner promoters slash creative guy out just to try out and just have fun with it, but also just eventually making some extra money for the school. So, but like we have smaller dojo promotions and we have like bigger events with, uh, you know, we try to have a setup like 1993 WWF. So with garden rails and entrance and everything. So it's kind of the motto of like resting like it was before when we liked to watch it ish. Uh, and then also I opened up recently, um, uh, uh, a closing brand for professional wrestling. It's called team wrestling brand. And basically, Team Wrestling Brand is like the same thing what I talked before, like that we meet up uh, for this one thing we all love, and that is wrestling, right? Where we sacrifice so much time, money, uh, birthdays, whatever, even if you stand in the ring or outside of the ring or next to the ring or you sit next to the ring, depends. Um, it's like Team Wrestling is like a community thing, and I kind of like got myself into creating like some, some designs by myself, just free time, you know, just instead of like Instagram scrolling and just, you know, get sucked in by the social media crap, just uh, creating something and just maybe something where uh, somebody likes to order a shirt, um, you know, it comes from heart and it's basically uh, like the goal is just passive income where I can, you know, invest in, wrestling in the end so or family depends but yeah so that's some of my things but yeah in general like if you follow me on instagram xman3016 wolf without de because that's wwe trademark uh, and on x now uh, i call it twitter still twitter um <laughs> it's x uh, it's also xman3016 uh i'm at cameo as well and then yeah I think that's it for the for the plugins. Okay. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this conversation as much as we did here on the pod. Uh, I am James Gisanti, joined by Matt Cascone, and of course, joined by the Axe Man himself, Axel Tischer. Uh, as always, thank you for joining. If you like this video, hit subscribe, hit like. You know, we love talking wrestling, and we want you to be a part of it. But this is the Market Down Podcast. Thank you, and as always, watch wrestling. Producer Boy, take us out.